Hey guys, you're back here with Barry, and I want to introduce you to second time visitors of ours, and uh, they hail from the island of Bermuda. And uh, without any further delay, I want you to say hello to Renee and Winslow. Hi guys. Hi Barry. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Um, I wanted to, uh, since we were together a little over two weeks, which is uh, generally we see people four or five days, but it was their second visit. And uh, we've gotten to know them, my wife and I have gotten to know them a little bit better on the second visit. We sure did cover a lot more territory. Uh, here we are talking to you from Harabakoa. And uh, I wanted uh, to get a little bit of input from them primarily about what do you guys see happening since the last time we saw you about two and a half years ago uh, over in Bermuda? That's, that's what my interest was. Okay, well... Things are changing in Bermuda, like they're changing all around the world, as everyone is aware of so far. And um, with the COVID and things that are happening because of the economy with COVID, Bermuda is still a beautiful place and it's a uh, turn, but things are changing rapidly, like anywhere else in the world. What have you noticed? Uh, I remember during one of our evenings, uh, you mentioned things about. Um, stop checks on the roads and, and specifically which we found hard to believe fines of ridiculous amounts if you're not wearing a mask or well yeah during the actual um public lockdown and curfew they had to stop checks because for me that's such a densely populated area they, they felt best to keep everyone um, at, at a distance at home or whatever during the curfews and to protect those who uh to protect others they felt from those who were taking advantage of all the curfews and being out with um, um, unreasonable hours and they weren't adhering. adhering to the curfew laws, they would put some severe fines on them, you know, in a, well, some fines on them to ensure that they don't do it again or others who think about doing it would be uh, not willing to actually uh, partake in. Breaking a curfew. You know. Can you? Uh, what was that amount you were telling me? A ridiculous amount of. I think, as far as my remembrance, is that those who were caught um, without the, without a pass as an essential server or whatever, or essential work worker, without a valid reason, were actually fined. I think it was about three three thousand dollars. That U.S. dollars. Yes, U.S. dollars. You could have. Wow. Um, <laughs> okay. What are you finding with your family, friends? Do you find a lot of this is tilting people and kind of dividing people one way or the other, depending on how their viewpoints are? Yes, to a certain extent, but a lot of people, well, in our country, are kind of for, I guess, what's happening because they realize that Bermuda is a densely populated place and they want to be protected because of their perceived either so probably what's going on or how dangerous this COVID virus is. So most people in our, my experience, they they applaud what, what is going on in the curfews and stuff at, at that time. You know. Does that kind of reflect your personal views about it or do you do your own research independently and try to get a little bit above uh, what's going on on the mainstream news sources and things? Yeah, I, I like to research and I like to see what's going on and I like to look at it from a holistic point point of view that um, um, I can't really say it's, a, it's, a, it's an actual virus or not because I'm not a scientist, but from what I believe is that if you look at it holistically, if you take care of yourself, if you... Increase um, your immune system. In, increase your immune system. If you get your rest at night, uh, if you get plenty of exercise and stuff, I personally feel that you can overcome, if it is a virus, you, you can lower the chances of you being suscept susceptible to it. And both of you are, are vegan in your diet, I understand that as well. Yes, yes, that, that's, that's our emphasis for our lifestyle, eating. it's vegetarianism slash veganism. Do you feel that the immune system is sort of like a muscle if you don't use it you lose it in terms of like if you're constantly washing your hands with jelly all the time 
and you're constantly this. If you don't, uh, it, it, it apparently, at least our experiences, it seems to be those are the people that get sick first. Yeah, well, like like you said, we look at it at a holistic, from a holistic point of view, that if you are taking care of yourself, your immune system, that's what we're actually saying, your immune system can overcome it. Okay. It should be able to overcome it. You have a better chance of overcoming it. Um, but that's just from our understanding and our research and our lifestyle over the years. And we, we feel that it applies to almost any disease that will actually come, come over. Okay, let's hop on a plane together. Now let's take a flight over to the Dominican Republic. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about how your two weeks have been uh, for your second time. And we did get you out of the region to expose a little bit more of the country. Maybe briefly just tell your friends and family back home what what your personal experiences have been. Well, me personally, I absolutely loved it. It's actually a beautiful country, nice wide open spaces. Uh, For us specifically in Bermuda, our country is smaller. So we were really blown away just watching the, looking at the nature, wide open spaces, just looking at the animals. And initially we were just concerned of the safety and we were pleasantly surprised that it was safe. Um, the people were absolutely friendly. That was one of the things that we always discussed. And the people were very happy. Initially we were wondering, okay, maybe they're just pretending, but you know, over the, over the first time that we came, after a few days, people just still were friendly and happy. And as we came the second time, we saw that it was consistent. So that was one of the things that majorly attracted us here. As well as the food, it was so much variety of food. And for us, as Winslow mentioned earlier, we're vegan. So we eat lots of fruits and vegetables. And we had no issue at all with whatever we wanted. Everything that we needed for our diet was here. So we was very, very pleasant and happy about that. You found enough variety, right? Because to me that, you you, uh, you eat a lot of obviously uh, what your diet accommodates, but to, to me that wasn't a lot of variety because I, I eat everything that moves, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm so opposite, but um, you found it to be quite, quite uh, enough, I guess, to satisfy yes. your dietary yes. needs? Yes, we definitely did. Plenty of different fruits, variety of fruits, and a good variety of vegetables, even the grains, we were su- I was surprised. I didn't realize that you even grew rice here. So that was major uh, surprise. Leanne needed a second time also. Uh, when we originally settled here many years ago, she was overwhelmed a little bit the first time. And uh, we came back for a second visit, and she even said it was even better than the first time by a mile that, okay, I wasn't overwhelmed, it, it was. And, and no places for everybody. I don't, I, I kind of want to make that clear. This country or any country isn't for, for everybody, but Leanne felt the same way. So you would say your second time really confirmed this is a possible place you might want to call home. Yes, yes, the second time, because the first time it's like you're blown away, you're taken up with what you see, but you're still not in reality. I guess it's real or is it fictitious, you know what I mean? Because sometimes, when you go to a country, you may go end up in a tourist zone. Even though we didn't end up in a tourist zone, we end up in an agriculture zone. But still, from our previous experiences, we end up in a tourist zone. Everything's catered for tourism. Mm-hmm. So it's like a false sense of what the country's really like. But when we came back here again and we saw what we saw the first time, and then we were moved out of that area and ventured to some other areas, interiors of the country, and we're seeing the same thing and saying, wow, this must be true. Mm-hmm. Must be true. Absolutely. On a, on a final note, because uh, we've got a lot of exploring to do today, because our trip is coming to an end, unfortunately. Uh, are you looking forward to heading back? <laughs> <laughs> That's enough said. Anyway, I want to really thank you guys for taking 10 minutes to help us. Um, uh, you know, if there's anything you could say to your friends, neighbors, family, and everything about people that are a little bit afraid or on the fence post about things in life in general. Yeah. What could you tell them? Well, for one thing, I can say that you kind of have to do your research. You have to do your re- research. And you have to think logically mm-hmm. and methodically about what plans you're going to make for the f- future, how you can provide for yourself and your family, who you can rely on for your adequate information. And then you have to, well, I believe in prayer. You have to pray and ask God for his guidance and his watch care of you. And he will lead you step by step. You have to step out in faith. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And make make those moves, make those decisions. What you feel is best. At least 
if it goes a bit sour, you can say, I tried. But if you never tried, you never knew. And then you always have that in the back of your mind. What if? What if? So you have to decide what you're willing to live with. Yeah. Excellent. Any last saying before I cut camera? He said it all. He said it all? He said it all. Guys, thank you very much for spending 10 minutes with us because you really never know who you're going to help. Uh, we've, we've actually heard from people all over the world. By just taking 10 minutes of your personal time, we're going to get on and have a great day together. But I want to thank you for that. And uh, I want you to know Leanne and I also had a really good time with you. I know Johnny, uh, our partner in crime, you've always seen him on the videos. Johnny had a great time. And um, should this work out for you, and uh, we kind of think it will, we're looking forward to seeing a lot more of you guys, and I hope the feeling's mutual. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is mutual. <laughs> Until next time, it's Barry and DR. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.